Bhakti Sampadanti Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Yutha Bhattamadam Sri Guru Vashnamstha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ravanatam Vitam Tam Sadhidam Sarvaitam Sabadutam Paritana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakamitamastha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Sami Namaste Sarasate Deve Gauravani Prachamino Vishesha Vashunyavadi Paschatyavishatamina Mancha Kapatrubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Yatevacha Patitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnavivyo E Krishna Varna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatate Govesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namaste Tapta Kanchana Dorangi Radhe Vrindavane Shri Krishna Vanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hare Krishna Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Anveta Venana Shri Vasanika Gaura Vakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Welcome everyone to this initiation event. Um, let's see, we need a translation. No, maybe afterwards. Can you translate? Is it, is it being recorded? Yes, it's being recorded. Um, so, initiation, we call this in English. Uh, it's called Diksha in Sanskrit. Um, we have two stages of initiation in our tradition. Uh, and so we have in Sandra we're receiving the first stage, first initiation. And we sense it's an ongoing process. The practice of Krishna consciousness is ongoing um, from the first day that we catch the idea, yes, let me take up this practice of Krishna consciousness, all the way back to home, back to back, the ongoing pro process of initiation. Uh, and when we go back home, back to God, and then the process continues. Or we might say that's when it really starts. <laughs> uh, so we have some examples in our tradition, so many examples of initiation. We might think a little about these. Um, we have uh, Remembering, we have in the Bhagavatam the story, the account of Narada Muni, how he became Narada Muni. Uh, he was, in effect, initiated um, by some anonymous uh, Vaishnavas, devotees, Srila Prabhupada refers to them as the Bhakti Vedantas, plural. He says, because they were serving him. Because he was serving them as a young boy, so they became very pleased and they blessed him. So that blessing, uh, in one sense, was uh, the beginning of his spiritual life, or we may say his serving them was the beginning of his spiritual life. And we know that. Um, at one point, while he was still very young, there occurred a great misfortune in his life. 
his mother uh, departed the world very suddenly, uh, instead of from, his, from being bitten by a snake. And uh, it's also significant that uh, who was his mother? His mother was not a queen, not a high, highly posted uh, person, not of a Brahmin background. She was uh, of a simple, humble background. Uh, she's referred to as a maid servant, a very simple background. Narada was the son. And uh, his qualification was that he simply served. He is visiting sadhus for some reason. That was his qualification. Such that uh, he was, in effect, launched on the search for the Supreme Lord. Uh, so that after his mother died, he began to wander. And wandering, wandering, he became very absorbed in meditation. And at one point, the Lord appeared before him. Uh, the Lord himself appeared. And we may say this was uh, also initiation. The Lord appeared only briefly, and then he said, Okay, that's all you're going to see of me in this life. Uh, and then uh, he continued his, his life uh, remembering his vision of the Lord such that at the moment of his departure from the world, uh, he was able to immediately launch into uh, the identity as Narada in his next life. So that's one, one case, you could say, of initiation. Another is, in a way, the other way around. Narada becomes the guru. And again, uh, we have uh, a young, very young person, namely Dhruva, who is a small boy. Uh, and unlike Narada, he is coming from a twice-born background. He's coming from a Kshatriya background. His father is a great king. And uh, Dhruva has a problem. And the problem is that he wants to outdo his brother. He's a very competitive fellow. And he feels he's been insulted. And so uh, in his uh, frustration, his mother uh, gives him a suggestion. In a sense, his mother becomes a kind of guru. Uh, we say, Bart Bartma Pradarshaka, uh, one who shows the way, the Bartma, the path. She says, well, I've heard that those who are uh, seeking uh, seeking the Lord, go to the forest. And uh, there they perform austerity. I don't think she even says austerity, but they go to the forest. So immediately, Dhruva decides, OK, if that's what's necessary, then I'm out of here. <laughs> and he leaves and goes to the forest and he begins to wander about uh, rather aimlessly, until Narada appears before him. And Narada says, my dear little boy, what are you up to? And he says, I'm here to find the Supreme Personality of God. And, says, and Narada says, I think you're a bit young for that. Why don't you go back home? And Dhruva says, no, <laughs> I think I won't go back home. I want to find the Supreme Personality of God because I want to, at this time he had a very mundane purpose. He wanted to uh, gain a kingdom that was greater than that of his grandfather. So Narada saw that he was resolved and therefore he decided to initiate him. He gave him a 
mantra. Uh, mantra is, um, you could say, the sort of key element of initiation. Mantra, we understand, is a form of the Lord. Uh, in first initiation, we have uh, a kind of confirmation to continue what we're already doing, hopefully, namely chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And um, there is a tradition, although there is also another tradition, but there is a tradition that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu received this Maha Mantra from his guru, Ishvara Puri. Somebody's phone is ringing. <clears throat> So, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in any case, uh, initiates all of us into the chanting of Hare Krishna. And Sri Prabhupada says, anyone who is chanting Hare Krishna uh, regularly, it can be understood that that person has received the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, in that sense, Hare Krishna initiation, it's already done. <laughs> and we're all uh, chanting Hare Krishna, whether formally initiated or not. So in that sense, initiation takes place. The Ksha, uh, the Ksha, the ending of material life and uh, the receiving of transcendental knowledge. This is Jiva Goswami's explanation of what where Diksha means. Um, we have other mantras, additional mantras. Uh, in the second stage of initiation, and uh, tradition uh, tells us that these mantras are not, unlike the Maha Mantra, they are not broadcast. They are given uh, privately to the disciples. And this is more than one mantra. This will keep you very busy. <laughs> Chanting so many mantras. But we will explain about this uh, after, the, after the worship of Lord Vishnu in the form of fire. So yes, uh, 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 mm, what do I want to say? Dhruva Maharaj received um, a mantra from Narada Muni, he said, chant this mantra. Okay, so he chanted the mantra. And he kept chanting the mantra, and he kept chanting the mantra, and he kept chanting the mantra, and he became so absorbed in chanting the mantra that basically he gave up and forgot about taking care of his body. Uh, he just uh, became absorbed in chanting the mantra, which is not a secret, it's Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, which is a very nice mantra, which is not the mantra that we chant um, for whatever reasons. <laughs> but we do chant that mantra when we begin as an invocation for reciting uh, Shastra. So, Dhruva received this mantra uh, and he resolved that he would uh, chant this mantra until he obtained his goal. And his goal was, as I mentioned, to have darshan of the Supreme Lord. And this happened. The Lord appeared. When the Lord appeared, what happened? Dhruva became embarrassed. He was so thrilled, of course, to have the darshan of the Lord, and at the same time he became so embarrassed. And why was he embarrassed? Because he realized his purpose in uh, practicing the meditation that he had been doing uh, was not the right purpose. His purpose had been quite mundane, and now having the darshan of the Lord, he realized, oh, there's actually uh, a whole uh, 
um, bigger vision, which I have missed. But Dhruva was blessed, and we may say that this was his third initiation. <laughs> First his mother, then Narada, and then uh, the Lord himself initiated him into the full understanding of what spiritual life is, namely simply uh, surrender to the Lord, service to the Lord for the sake of, for the purpose of pleasing the Lord without any uh, selfish motivation for oneself. Ahaituti, ahetu, without a cause, ahaituti, aprati hata, without interruption. So, uh, these initiations are there described to give us inspiration that we can also follow in, in this tradition. We're all very fortunate. We have a tradition to follow. Uh, Srila Prabhupada, uh, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, ventured across the sea just to give this uh, tradition to us, to give this opportunity for all of us to um, take shelter of uh, the Lord, to take shelter of the teachings of the Lord as given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaito Dharvana Marjanam, Baba Mahadava Gnini Mahatanam, Shreya Kairava Chandrika Vitaranam, Vidya Madhu Jeevanam, Anandam Buddhi Vardanam, Pratipadam Purnam Vidasvadanam, Sarvatma Snapadam Padam, Vijayadeva Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. We can all take part in Sri Krishna Sankirtanam, make this our life's goal. Um, participate means also with others, not that I will take initiation and I will go off on my own and, um, and imitate Dhruva Maharaj. No. <laughs> Might work, everything's possible, but uh, recommended and certainly uh, followed by us is that we remain in the association of devotees. We especially encourage uh, devotees to participate in this society that Srila Prabhupada established, International Society for Krishna Consciousness, which, he said, is uh, there for the purpose of hearing about Krishna. So we hear about Krishna together, uh, we chant about Krishna together, we glorify, we remember Krishna together, and in this way, very happily, go back. Back to God. A nice place to go. Highly recommended. Best place. Not comparable to any place in this world. No matter how nice a place in this world might be, it doesn't match the spiritual place of Krishna and his devotees. So let's do that and let's um, not keep it for ourselves. Let's, as followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates, let's do whatever we can to um, bring others, to invite others to also take part in Sankirtana and the Sankirtan movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Right, I think I'll leave it at that. What do you think? Shall we leave it at that? There's so much could be said, but we will leave it at that. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki Jai Shila Prabhupada ki Hare Krishna. So, what should we do now? The name? Ah, initiation names. Okay, let's do that.
after all these years of chanting Hare Krishna, maybe it's time to make it official, right? Maybe. Why not? So there are some regulative principles you've been following and will continue to follow. What are these? Uh, no gain. No it feeds X and no it X and so no it is Okay, very good. And then there is chanting of Hare Krishna. <laughs> Sixteen rounds as best you can. You know your situation. Would you like to? Um, would you like to be known as Sandra Devi Dasi, or would you like another? Name? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I was thinking maybe another name. Saraswati Devi Dasi. What do you think? <laughs> it's okay? Okay. That's good. I've several rounds on this piece. Uh, Saraswati is river Saraswati and also the goddess Saraswati. Uh, the river is very much debated. Where is that river? Um, because it seems to have disappeared. The tradition says it's invisible and it comes up or it appears or joins uh, the Ganga and the Yamuna at uh, uh, the tree bani, the Sangha, uh, which is at present day Allahabad or Prayag. The goddess, uh, Saraswati, who is identified with the river, is very special. She is very much worshipped in the Vedas. Do you want to sit on the chair? <laughs> it's okay if you want to sit on the chair. Later. Later. Um, uh, she's very much worshipped. She's identified uh, also with the goddess Vach. Vach is the goddess of speech and also of music and of learning. And in India, many, many people, especially children, um, worship goddess Saraswati on a certain day so that they will pass their exams. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes, Saraswati is very nice. She's actually she's worshipped on, uh, or she, yeah, I think it's uh, the day of worship is um, the same day as the first day of spring in the um, Indian tradition, uh, Vasanta Panchami, which was just uh, a few days ago. And you already have your names. <laughs> Unless you want other names. <laughs> we want new names. No? Same name? It's okay. <laughs> okay.
Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, 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 Kr